My name is Jersey Drozd. I am the former executive director of CXE. Now I'm a volunteer and I get to help out with the kids track and thank you for bringing your young people to this awesome comics festival. Um, you may have, oh, at least start by, uh, with, with a land acknowledgement. Cartoon Crossroads Columbus acknowledges that the ancient ancestors of the Eastern Woodland tribes, now referred to as the Adena and Hopewell cultures, inhabited the land we know as Ohio. Their descendants include the living nations of the Shawnee, Miami, Wyandotte, Delaware, and Seneca Cayuga. We honor and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this place in which we gather. And you may have noticed that there was no cover charge to get in here. You just walked right in and there's stuff for you to interact with. There's awesome cartoonists to meet. Um, I mean, the only place we want you to be spending money is in the expo buying some awesome comics. And so how are we able to do this? How are we able to put together all this amazing stuff and bring all these incredible people from around the world to do free comics workshops for you? Well, it's called sponsors. So uh, we have to thank some of our sponsors, including the Greater Columbus Arts Council, the Ohio Arts Council, White Castle, the Columbus Foundation, UBS, the Japan Foundation, and our other festival sponsors. Thank you to them for making this all happen. These programs are free because of them. And now I would like to introduce our presenter, Janie Ho who I've known for a decade now, and is, is one of, her art is super charming and wonderful, but the reason I celebrate her is because she is super charming and wonderful, and Aww. I know you are all going to feel safe to explore art today, because she makes it accessible and fun to do. So with that, I'm gonna get out of the way so y'all can draw with Janie Ho. Yay, thank you for having me. So, I just, I'm gonna have, I have a little slideshow, but I'm just gonna talk about my work and maybe how a graphic novel is made. But I want everybody here to feel just super chill. It's not gonna be graded on. You guys can do whatever I want. Whatever I say is a suggestion. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about my stuff. Let's see. So I am a children's book illustrator, actually. I do a lot of children's books. So I do a lot of picture books, a lot of board books, but, I'm really into comics lately. So, and I'm really into graphic novels and drawing comics. So, does anybody know Highlights Magazine? Highlights High Five Magazine? So I do a lot of work for them. And so this is one of my covers that I did. Um, carrots and broccoli drawing, uh, exercising. And then I actually have a, a comic strip in Highlights High Five Magazine called Super Chicken and Shelly, which is about a super chicken and her, his sidekick, Shelly the Egg, kind of help kids solve problems They're in a really weird and maybe unconventional way. So here it is. So this is kind of like helping out with the neighborhood girl with her lemonade stand and super chicken making a big poster for them and then actually he actually ends up being the customer. But I have some top secret books that are coming out. Fall, we're already in fall 2023. So does everybody here swear by secrecy? Yes? Yes, okay. Keep it a secret. Keep it a secret. Oh, we got a handshake. So I have this book. It's called The Lost Mitten, and it's coming out in November. So it's about a rabbit and a mouse finds a red mitten in the snow, and they have to try to find its owner. So this is one of the pages, kind of rabbit puts the mitten on the hat. And so we'll find out if they can return it to its owner. Hi, come on in, yes. <laughs> you wanna come draw? <laughs> so my idea for this book was tracks in the snow. So I went to a, I went to a workshop all about just looking for animal tracks. I, I can't believe there's a workshop like this, but then I was in this workshop and I thought, hmm, what about, what if the animals were tracking me? Because I was walking around in the snow and I was making tracks too. So that is how I got my idea for this book. So ideas can come from anywhere, right? Anytime that you're doing something with your family, going outside, you can always come up with a lot of story ideas. But I have to ask everybody here, if you like french fries. Who likes french fries? Oh good, oh good. But do you like onion rings? 
We got a few. But did you know that onion rings can be evil? No? Yes? Sorry, bad news for you. Onion rings can be evil. So I, I'm kind of giving it away because I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> but um, So I, this week I'm actually celebrating my graphic, early reader. It's an early reader graphic novel. It's called Fry Guys with me, uh, Eric Duran. And so I, of course, I have to take a vote. I know that some of you guys came to my table and voted already. I have a little voting poster for you to vote. But I always like to take a vote. So these are the three characters. They're called one sweets, curly, sweets is sweet potato fry, by the way, curly fries and waffles. And they live in a town called Spud Town. And these evil, evil onion rings come and invade their time, town and they're trying to save their town. So I would like to take a vote before I go on. We'll see what the winner is today. Waffles, anybody's favorite is waffles. Oh, that's like almost everybody already. Oh no, what about the other fries? And curly. Okay, a little bit. Okay, that's everybody in the back, it seems like. What about sweets? Oh, we still have a sweets. Okay. I don't know who the winner is. Maybe waffles? That was a lot. I know everybody likes waffle fries. I know me too. So this is the book I'm actually celebrating this week. So here are some of the insides. So look at these evil onion rings coming to attack and zapping them and frying them a little bit, even though they're fried already. And of course, the boss. The boss has to be the onion, the giant onion. So I always like to show a little bit of the manuscript or how, how we all come up with ideas for our comics. Sometimes we like to write it out first. So if you see how it's written but with by Eric, can anybody tell me how is it different than like maybe something you have written for maybe assignments or for school? Yes. Right. So we kind of it's almost like a screenplay, right? A lot of dialogue and what it's going to be in each panel. So that's how Eric writes. And so this is the panel I come up with when he writes the script and then I draw the pictures. I kind of translate it into thought bubbles and then into panels. And so here is just a rough sketch. So I always like to show this because everybody here, we don't need to make it perfect, right? We only have about 50 minutes here and we're trying to make it perfect. I don't want everybody to feel the pressure, just do whatever you like. You know, I even, I start out with just very, very rough sketches. And then I know that this is a blank screen. I used to have a video of me doing this sketch, but we're gonna move on from there. Let's, oh, let's see if it works. I don't know if it works, uh, it doesn't work. But then I kind of clean it up. It's starting to look a little bit cleaner, right? So I have to do my work over and over and over again to make it nicer and cleaner. And then colors. I know that everybody's got some very professional coloring pencils here today. So I like to do, what I like to do is I like to pick out a color palette for everything before I start. So you can see I already have a color palette for sweets. I have a color palette for waffles. Can anybody tell me why I do this? So Fry Guys have 80 pages in a book, by the way. So why would I do this? Somebody in the back? Yes. Yeah, different colors. Anybody else? Yeah. I have it all planned out. Planning is pretty important. Yes. What do you think? You don't forget, right? Because 80 pages, yes. Consistency, right. Right, because sometimes we don't want curly to have a different color sometimes. Yes. I, exactly, exactly. I want those fry houses to be red. I need to remember, you know, if I, if I, if I, this is, book is 80 pages. If I started to color the fry houses wrong in page 40, what happens? 
keep on doing, but I gotta go back and change all the colors, right, to make sure it's all consistent. So that's why I have a color palette like this, just to help myself out. And so this is actually a sample of the color that I drew. So you can see that I have like a little kit ketchup fountain, they have like chip houses. And this is the printed version, and it gets printed. So now, I have a question for all of you, some quiz time. You didn't know that you, there was going to be a quiz. You just thought you were coming to make comics today, but how long did it take to, for me to make Fry Guys from start to finish? What do you think? So A is one month, B, six month, month C, over a year, or D, 500 years. So <laughs> you never know. Uh, a, who thinks A, one month? Nobody? Oh, we got one in the back. It's so a one month, you think. B, six months. Now we got a little bit more. Okay. C, over a year. Oh, everybody. Okay, everybody thinks it's over a year. Or D, 500 years. I knew there was always, there's always one better person that always, I'm not 500 years old yet, I know. But, so what do you think? So the answer is yes, it's over a year. So I started working on Fry Guys probably last summer. So it kind of came out this week. So yes, it's been a year. And it's probably longer than that because um, Eric, who's the writer of Fry Guys, need to write the thing too, right? And I'm just here drawing. And then it has to get printed. And then it has to get shipped to the bookstores. So it takes a very, very long time to make a book. So no worries today when we're working on our comic and it, you don't finish, that's okay, because you know what, you can take it home and you can finish it. So now I have another question for you all. This is the cover. How many versions of the cover of Fry Guys did I make? What do you think? So this is, this is the final cover. But you know, like I said, I have to just kind of sketch something over and over to make it right. And especially for cover, right, we really, we really want to make sure that it's the best cover it, it could be. Like when I, you go to the library, I want to make sure you pick it up and be intrigued. So A, three versions. B, four versions. C, five versions. Or, or D, perfect the first time. So <laughs> who thinks A, three versions? Some. B, four versions? OK, a little bit more now. No? C, five versions? Got more. Even half and half and half. D, perfect the first time. Oh, I got some confidence in me. Let's see. What do you think? So the answer is four, four versions. So as you can see, this is the progression of what happened. So what do you see the differences are? Anybody can tell me some differences from one to four, besides the colors of a course, right? I was just sketching these out to make sure that it's right. I have a lot of people looking at it to make sure it's correct and it looks good, and then I color it. But yes, what do you see as a difference? Yes. What do you think? Uh-huh. Onion rings. Yes, it's got a subtitle in that one, right? That's right. It's just Fry Guys. Anybody else? Did I? Yes. Right. Right, right. So you notice that I kind of gave Fry Guys a little logo. And of course, it had to be in a potato. So I decided to go with a potato logo. Yes, anything else you notice? Right. I had to shift the clouds a little bit, right? 
Yeah, because we wanted, we wanted an invasion. I mean, if it's an invasion of onion rings, I can't just have one onion ring, right? I have to like tell, show everybody like, it is just a big bunch of onion rings coming to attack the town. So one more, yes, in the back. Yes. Oh yeah, no lines, that's right. It's like those are like the lasers that's kind of coming down. So yeah, so this is it for me. I just wanted to show you how fry guys are made, but I think this is the best part is that we get to draw our own um, comic. So let's just do a bunch of circles to start off with. Let's warm up for a second. You can see. I'm just gonna draw a bunch of circles because we need to, because characters and how they're feeling, if anybody saw Reina's exhibit, you can see, let's see, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see better. You see me? We have a bunch of circles. I like to walk around, so <laughs> I like to see what everybody's doing. Yes. Kind of, kind of. Maybe I'll make one of them as onion rings. But we're going to warm up today with some facial expressions. Let's start off with happy. That's an easy one, right? How do we do happy? Yes, let's see. Let's just draw them. How do you think? Eyebrows? Yes. The eyebrows are straight, yeah. This big smile. Let's just start off with that because that's easy. I like to draw. So happy, a big smile. We're gonna start off with some easy one. We're just warming up, however your character is like. What about sad? How would the eyebrows go? So one really good trick is that sometimes I have a mirror next to my desk and I just realize I make strange, like all the face that I want to be sad how is my eyebrows going <laughs> going down sometimes i'm looking down how is this we got some tears The trick really is the eyebrows. The eyebrows can kind of tell a lot about how somebody is feeling, right? And the tears really help, obviously. How are we all doing? Just warming up with some nice facial expressions. What about surprise? If you're talking about a, you know, somebody giving you a surprise party, how would the expressions be? How would you draw that? Yes, what do you think? Like a big O, like you can see. Oh, yes, and the eyebrows would kind of go up. Yes, I see the face. That's a very shocking face, right? So let's do one that's like surprise. So with a big eyes, maybe the inside would be kind of smaller to make it look like the eyes are bulging. So you can see my other ones, maybe the eyes are a little bit kind of bigger, but in here, it would be like a little bit bigger. The eyebrows would be really high up if I was to draw somebody surprised. And then just a big, you can see their mouth and maybe their tongue, but something like this. So what are there, maybe angry? How do we make somebody angry? Where, how would the eyebrows go? Yeah, <laughs> you see it, I'm like, mm, so my eyebrows would be like up a little bit, right? Our eyes would be very stern. So let's try angry. It's pretty angry right here with the. Very, very closed in eyes and just, it's all in the eyebrows. 
looking angry. So there's another thing I can do here to make him very angry with steam coming out, maybe. So sometimes when we draw little pictures next to our characters to make it more expressive, for example, if I wanted to draw somebody sleeping, what would I draw above their head to tell? Everybody will, I wouldn't need to say like, this character is sleeping. Everybody will know, yes. ZZZs, right? I would draw some of these ZZZs. The dream bubbles, yeah, they're like dreaming while they're sleeping. That's a great idea. <laughs> a baby. No, you can draw that for your comic too. So that's a very actually good like dreaming sequence. So what about if a character has an idea? Like what little symbol would you draw above their head? Yes. A light bulb. Okay, so for example, if I my happy character here has an idea, yes, I would draw a light bulb, right? So there's all these little little I would like to call it icons or little smaller illustrations next to our character to tell us their, what they're thinking without kind of writing it out loud. So there's actually a word for that. Does anybody know what word that is? For like the ZZZs above somebody sleeping or a light bulb or the little angry puffs that we draw when somebody's angry, they're just steaming. It's called emanada, so it's actually I always want to say empanadas. It's not empanadas, although I'm, maybe I'm hungry. It's emanadas. So there's all these little tricks that we can have in comics where we can draw characters and express them. What other expression should I do? I'll take suggestions. We got two more. Yes. Neutral? OK, how would we do neutral? Just just we don't care. Just the person just like, oh, look at me. I'm just, how would we draw that? Let's see. I would draw. Just or I, I, I'm thinking of the uh, the emoji, just kind of like, <laughs> just kind of lines, just uh, just very like very zen. Actually, I'm drawing a very zen character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? I will need one more like emotion. Is there any suggestions? Yes. Scared. How would we draw scared? How would we draw scared? We have ideas? Let's try. Let's try. Scared. I think my everything would be kind of wiggly. I would draw the eyebrows to be wiggly. It's kind of maybe just squinting their eyes. And just very wiggly mouth too. Just a little, maybe that looks a little bit more nervous. Nervous, scared, maybe? We're good. We've warmed up. We kind of have our good characters, facial expressions. I'm watching the clock, so we have some time for our comic. I'm going to go around to see if everybody's doing. And then we're going to grab another piece of paper, because we're going to do our comic. I don't want to run out of time. How is everybody here? I haven't come here in the back. Hello. How is it? Oh, very nice. That's very angry. <laughs> Let's see. It looks great. Everybody's doing good? OK. So let's grab another piece of paper. We're going to start with our four panel comic. So what I like to do, I'll write this on top. We're all warmed up with some facial expressions. So I like to just draw, divide the page in four. But I just like to draw four boxes. But you guys can do whatever you like. So what I'm going to do is make sure the camera can see me. So I'm just going to draw four boxes, four panels.
So I know that some people like their panels to be a little bit different sizes. For me, I'm just going to draw them all evenly. But you do whatever you think works for your comic. And we all see. Yes. We're good? Everybody's got a fresh piece of paper? OK. So usually, when I do this workshop, I like to tell everybody um, to come up with two characters. So in a lot of my work, I have a lot of um, two characters that are opposites of each other. So in one of my picture books called Bear and Chicken, a big bear and a chicken kind of come together and I make a story about them. And then in The Lost Mitten, you see the bigger rabbit and the smaller mouse kind of come together and have a story together. But I think in honor of Fry Guys, I kind of want to encourage everybody to draw some food <laughs> today. We'll see how it goes. But you draw whatever you want, OK? So we're going to come up with two characters today. And we're going to introduce them to the first panel here. So what is everybody thinking of? Let's get some ideas going. What do you think? Two characters, maybe a little bit opposite of each other, so we can have fun with them. Maybe even one is bigger, one is smaller. Yes. Your parents and you, that's great. I would love to know what it's about. Anybody have any ideas right now? We're going to introduce the two characters in the first panel. Yes. What do you have? Do you have two characters ready? Yeah. OK. OK, you can sketch, because we have plenty of paper. So I would love an idea of what I should draw in mind, because I'm going to be taking ideas from all of you. So can I get a suggestion what I should draw for my first panel to introduce our characters? Yes. A pug? OK, let's see if my pug is any good. Yes. A pug and a milkshake. OK, I will do a pug and a milkshake. I don't even know how to draw a pug. I don't want to mess up their little snout, their little part. So but like a doggy pug. OK, all right, so I'm going to start. Well, I will take more ideas. So everybody start on their comic. We're going to introduce our characters. So I'm going to do a pug and a milkshake. And then we're going to give them an environment, because we're going to introduce these characters. Yes. Oh, wow. OK. Pug in, well, they need to be separated, because I need them to like not merge together as one character. But they're in the sink. OK, let's do it. OK, everybody, start working on your own. We're going to introduce your two, whatever two characters you want. This is where we introduce and an environment for them. So I'm doing a pug, which I don't know, I don't know how to do a pug very well. I know, I don't have reference right now. I'm going to draw kind of like a dog. A doggy and a, a milkshake. OK, let's see. Mm. I'm going to be drawing my pug. There's the pug. This is my pug. All right. This is my pug and a milkshake? Yeah. OK, let's see. I love drawing food, so milkshake is great. It's going to be, it's got a cherry on top with whipped cream. We need lots of whipped cream for our milkshake. Oh, I need a straw, right? How's this so far? A, <laughs> looks good. The straw, yeah, there's the straw. And they're going to be near a sink? Shit. Is there any other environments I should put them in? The dishes, all like on a kitchen counter. Maybe I'll just have them on a kitchen counter. 
you know? Maybe they'll be in the sink. Maybe here's the edge of the sink. It's going to be interesting. Maybe they will. Just kind of give them an environment. So what's everybody working on? Let's give me your two characters. Anybody want to share what you're working on so far? Oh, I see. What are you doing? Let's see. French fries and milkshake. French, OK, great, perfect. And then try and like escape from getting, from getting eaten. Oh, you already have an idea what happened. So yes, let's introduce our characters, two characters, and, and then the environment they should be in. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to move my paper a little bit. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to give everybody some time. So now on our second panel here, we need to give these characters you have a problem if you haven't thought of it already, right? So let's generate some problems that any two characters can have. Anybody can give me ideas. Let's just generate some ideas if, if our friends here don't, doesn't have an idea of what kind of problem we should give our characters. Yes? Yes, perfect, right? One of them can be bad and one of them could be good. Yes? Oh, yes, yeah, somebody can break and they can put it back together. Any other ideas? Just pro general problems that any of your characters can True. have. Everybody good? Do we have a problem for our characters to have? And maybe they should be saying something. We're just very chill. We can just, whatever happens, happens. I have some, make some very interesting comics. So what do you think my pug and my milkshake should be doing? A problem. Yes. Okay, so somebody tries to drink the milkshake. Yes, any other ideas? The pug could try to drink the milkshake, yikes. Let's see. Maybe the pug will hop up to near its straw and trying to drink, OK? Maybe I'll do that. Let's see. So we're going to wing it. I'm, gonna, I'm winging it here. So I think the pug was just going to see what a delicious shake. Let's, let's have a sip. So problem starts on panel two. Let's see. I'm going to draw. Maybe the pug should be a little bit naughty, yes. It's going to hop up. How's this? Yeah. A little hop, a little wiggle. <laughs> it's a little bit got a naughty look to it, so its eyebrows are kind of he knows what he's doing. And then maybe milkshake is a little bit shook. Yeah, I'm a little okay. let's that sounds that's a good idea, right? A little bit of force, and he's kind of like, oh no, I'm getting tipped over. And it's really powerful when I kind of start kind of having it tilt off the page, right? So we really know that this character is really just falling. But now he's got to look, he's got to look this way. What should the pug say? I need to start giving it some dialogue, right? Maybe. He's just tilt -o tilt over. Some little shake lines. So what should the pug say, or what should the milkshake say? Let's put some, let's put some speech bubbles. Anybody have ideas? You have ideas? Milkshake should be saying, ah, on the second page. Ah, OK, ah. And what about uh, pug? 
All right, so, whoa. Oh, this is getting to a darker turn. Time for dessert. And the shake's going, ah. So I have a question for you. I'm gonna do my speech bubbles now. So, which one is a better way? Writing the text first, then drawing the speech bubbles? Or drawing the speech bubbles first, then writing the text? Yes. Writing, writing first, why? Why? That's right, that's right. I know that maybe I've done this in the past, right, where I draw the speech bubble first and then, I, and then my character has a lot of things to say and then it's all squished together. So it's nicer to just write your text first then draw the speech bubble. So let's do that. Let's put some speech, let's put some speech bubbles in your second panel. Yeah. Let's see, so mine's gonna say, the pug's gonna say, time for dessert, okay. Time for, it's starting to turn evil. <laughs> and it's going, ah. It's just practice. It's a little squished right now, right? Yeah, but sometimes it could be cropped. It doesn't need to be like a full circle, right? Because I kind of have it in the corner here, too. Um, the oh, 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 right, the sink. I didn't draw the sink. Thank you for reminding me, because I remember I draw the little edge of the sink here. So yeah, the, so you jump in, yeah. The third panel in the fourth panel is going to be how your character solves the problem or not solve the problem, right? Sometimes we don't have enough space. Sometimes it's just funny not to have them solve the problem. So yes, we have, is, how's everybody doing? I haven't come and checked. Is everybody is second panel have, oops. Oh, you're already working on a lot of them already. So se second panel is the introduction of a problem. The third and fourth panel is solving it. Or maybe not solve it. Maybe something funny happens in the end. Because sometimes there's not enough room to solve all your problems. Let's, so I think everybody's on to it. We only have, I'm going to watch the time. We have like six more minutes left. I better hurry up. So I have to make this. So I'm going to make the milkshake fall into the sink. And what is the milkshake going to say? Can I have some suggestions? Yes? <laughs> <laughs> Can't still talk, right? I know. Still conscious? A zombie. Yeah, let, I'll think about it. See if this milkshake turns into a zombie. Yes. Um, milkshake is going to turn into a zombie. Uh huh. No. Okay, so and then maybe Pug will help out in the end or not help out. So let me draw mine because we're running low on time and everybody has to work on theirs as well. Let's see. So the milkshake is going to fall into the sink. <laughs> Let me think. So this is like the faucet. I don't know. This is, this is my weird faucet. So this is the sink. It's, it's a giant sink. I thought that was kind of like a giant sink, right? So now, let's see. Can you guys all see? Mine's gonna... Sorry, he's gonna have X eyes now, because he's injured. And he's just kind of the, the contents are spilling all over the place. The cherries gone over this side. <laughs> the straw. This is very, very sad about this. It's getting dark. All right, and so I know where's the pug. So this is actually like the little sinkhole. 
How's this? So this is my problem. And so let's have a good satisfying ending for, <laughs> I don't know how satisfying it could be at this point, but the pug should be coming back. Oh, and is this, no, and I don't even think he can talk. Oh, I did a speech bubble first, then the text. No. <laughs> it's kind of going into a dark turn. How is everybody else is doing? So, here it is. It's weird, I know, but we're trying to make a story out of it. Let's see. So the fourth and final should be the resolution. So sometimes there are problems that doesn't get solved, but something funny can happen. I think that the pug should kind of come back and do something for the milkshake, perhaps. What do you think? Any suggestions? Oh gosh, some hands coming in to wash the, the, the milkshake glass. What else? Do you have more ideas for me? Mm. It's already turning kind of dark. Oh, and I have three minutes to wrap it up. <laughs> Let's see. Is everybody finishing their fourth comic? You're already done? I need to, I need to wrap mine up. Let's see. That's the fun. <laughs> but I need the pug involved. So I think maybe the pug will turn on the faucet. How does that sound? All right, let's do that. <laughs> this is turning very dark. I don't know what happened, but OK, let's go with it. <laughs> The cherry's already out, and the cream and the straws. Well, this dog, this pug, has turned out to be quite evil. Let's see. I'm going to have the little paw. Almost, because I want him to turn on the faucet. Let's see. Yeah, he's going to turn on the faucet. Here is the sink turning it on and then just splashing it. Maybe he wakes up, actually. Let's save this milkshake. So this is the shocking. Is there a little cream left on top of him? He kind of wakes up. So that is, that is my four panel comic. I don't know what happened, but. That is it. <laughs> Thank you for all your suggestions. What a silly, silly one. <laughs>